A wise man once told me that you learn something every day. So, we're gonna learn today. We're talking about Procreate. So today we're gonna go through the 10 most important things, in my opinion, um, that you should know if you're a beginner in Procreate, haven't even opened the app, or have been using it for a while, that you should know. So pretty excited about this one. It's pretty lengthy, but there's a lot of value in it. So, so stay tuned and uh, let's get after it. Side note, if you watched my last video and you were wondering about this scrape on my forehead, um, Long story short, I was trying to hang up a shelving unit in my garage and I got it up and I was like, wow, I'm pretty impressed that I got that on the first try. And I put a little weight on it and it just came crashing down and scraped my, my forehead. So if you were wondering, that's what happened. <laughs> and, all right, now we can get on to the lesson. All right, tip number one, we're talking about stacks. So I'm a big fan of being organized and having things looking clean. So that way, one, it's kind of overwhelming for me to see something that's super messy. So stacks are a way to stay organized. So let's jump into the app and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So before my Procreate board looked something like this and it was just overwhelming, like looking at all these different things. And I'm gonna show you how to use stacks to get organized. So this is how you create a stack you go up to select you grab the items you want to put in a, a folder essentially once you have them all selected you go to the top where you click select and you click stack and that's going to group them all up and put them in a stack or folder and here's a cool trick to show you how to get a cover for your stack so whatever's in the first place that first box area is going to be the cover so you can do whatever you want. I just did something simple with these yellow, um, or sorry, with these white backgrounds and black text. So you can get crazy, you can illustrate something, you can do whatever you want. It's really up to you. So it's pretty cool. I've seen some really cool ones out there and staying organized with these stacks is just makes me so much happier to open up Procreate. Hey, tip number two, we're moving along we are talking about canvas setup. So this is an important step, because if you don't set up your canvas correctly, you might lose some resolution. If your art is going onto something like a sticker, um, you wanna make sure you have this set up so that it's printed correctly. So that's why I've included this one in my top 10. So the first thing to create a canvas, you hit the plus icon in the top right, and then you can enter in a custom width and height. And the most important thing is the DPI, which stands for dots per inch. And this is essentially the resolution of your canvas. So I would recommend staying at least at 300. Um, anything below that, you're gonna start to get into a little bit of pixelation when you zoom in. And 300 is just a good rule of thumb for high resolution. Okay, there's also color profile that you can adjust. RGB is for digital, CMYK is for anything going through a printer. I have no idea what all these things mean down here. If you do, that's awesome. But uh, yeah, I, I have no clue. You can also edit your time-lapse settings as well as a few other things. But most important are your dimensions and your DPI. So there you go. Moving on to number three. All right, tip number three. We are learning about the pinch to zoom and rotate technique. This is a, a technique, I would call it, over a tip. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Being able to pinch and zoom and rotate the canvas fast is huge to get your lines precise, um, drawing in a way that's comfortable for you. So rotating your canvas, instead of turning your iPad all over the place, just doing this pinch and, pinch and zoom to get you in a comfortable position is key to get down. So the faster you pick up on that, the more you'll uh, be set up to better art. Tip number four we are talking about how to get a perfect circle and straight line. It's pretty easy, this is a basic one. I would say that um, once you know how to do it, it's pretty much a muscle memory. So all you need to do is you just have to draw a circle, keep your pen on the tablet or on the screen, and you'll connect the 
perfect the lines, and then you can tap your finger down and it's gonna make a perfect circle. So if you're doing a line and it's a little bit wobbly, just keep your pen down and it's gonna straighten it out for you. This works with curves as well, so this is really a good, a handy thing to know how to do. All right, tip number five, we're talking about copy and paste. I included this one because I think it's really good to know how to do so you don't have to sit there and draw the same thing over and over again. If you did it once and you're happy with it, there's an easy way to copy it and paste it so you don't have to do it again. The first way to do it is you grab the selection tool and you go around whatever you want to copy and you want to use your free hand and then you can click below, you can copy and then you just use the cursor tool and you can move it around. It's also going to paste this on a new layer so you can do it something smaller or really any object. And just like that, you can also turn on the snapping and magnetics if you would like those features. But if not, turn them off and you can move it wherever you want. You can also rotate here with the cursor tool. And a good shortcut to get down is swipe on the screen in a downward motion with three fingers. And it's going to bring open the copy and paste shortcut. And there's a bunch of little features in here. So just remember that three fingers swipe down and you're good to go. Okay, this is arguably the most important step. And by the end of this tutorial, you'll understand why layers are so important. So I essentially always have three main layers. I have my sketch, my color, and my line art. So to add a new layer, you just click the plus icon on your layers panel, and it's gonna pull up, create a new layer. You can rename it by tapping on it, click and rename, pull up the keyboard, name it whatever you'd like. So here I'm gonna put write out test, and I'm going to show you how when you drag the layer underneath another one, it goes underneath just like a layer works. So this is good to know for uh, colors and keeping things organized. You can also group layers by holding them on top of each other and they'll create a group. We're still talking about layers and adding to the, their importance and why you need to know how to use them to better set yourself up to create cool stuff. So here's the reference layer. So you see I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to use this as my color layer and if I drag the color into the lines it's not going to fill the lines and that's because I need to turn my line art to the reference. So you click on it, tap reference and now once I go back to my color layer I can easily drag the color into the lines and it's going to fill that shape. So this is the easiest way to color and I highly recommend doing this and you'll see why moving forward to the next step. All right, tip number eight, we're talking about a clipping mask and a clipping mask is essential for shadows, highlights and other cool details that you wanna put on top of your color and not get outside the lines. So let's see what it's about. So I'll show you the difference. I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna color on top of my colors with these lines and you can see how it's only staying inside the lines. And that's because I have it, this layer turned on as a clipping mask. And if I turn the, the clipping mask off, you can see that all the lines outside of the color layer are out visible. All right, tip number nine is shadows. And if you haven't caught on yet, each one of these tips builds on the next. So if you've skipped ahead, you might need to go back to totally understand what's going on here. But we're talking about shadows. I'm gonna show you how I added these shadows here and by using a clipping mask on top of my color. So I've made a new layer, it's a clipping mask, and I'm gonna use black and I'm gonna lower the opacity of my whole layer to about 30%. 30% is like my go-to number, just like how it looks. And now you can see that it makes a nice shadow on top of that color and it stays in the line so you don't gotta worry about being totally precise. And it's just the easiest way to do this. And I'm gonna show you why you use black. So if you were to change the color to a dark orange and we're trying to make this orange shadow here, it looks good on top of the orange, but say you wanted to make this Ninja Turtle, a Leonardo Ninja Turtle, not Michelangelo. And you changed the wristband to a blue color. Now your orange shadow is gonna look pretty off where you can tell that the black one adjusts to the color change. So by using black, you have the flexibility of changing colors down the road and you just set yourself up better for not having to go rework all your shadows. You could also play with all the blend modes and do some cool things here. 
and kind of experiment with different styles, opacities. There's a ton of cool stuff you could do here, but now you get how to do it. All right, and for tip number 10, we're talking about highlights. It's pretty similar to shadows, except we're gonna use white instead of black. So I've made a new layer and I'm gonna use white. I'm gonna lower the opacity down to about 30% again. And it works the exact same as shadows. Just make sure it's got a clipping mask and you can just work your lines, create some shadows. I typically don't go crazy on highlights. Um, I think only where they're essential. Again, you can play with the blend modes here. Um, on the white, it does some cool things to your colors. So get crazy, get creative, whatever you're feeling. There's so many possibilities. Okay, I just had to do this one. It's a bonus, bonus tip. And I'm gonna show you how to do some cool effects that are new in Procreate 5X. I really enjoy using these and I think they're pretty cool. So I just had to include it here. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is copy your color layer and paste it in. I'm gonna three finger swipe down and I've got a new color and I'm gonna to go to the adjustments, which is the wrench icon and use the half tone. So if you slide your pen across, you can see the threshold growing on the top and I'm gonna do about 30% here and you can change the type down at the bottom. I'm gonna go full color and then you can play with the blend modes, the opacity to get kind of a cool look, almost a comic book look here with half tones, which I like using. And you can also erase them in spots so it's not covered in the whole thing, which is pretty cool. Another way, another method you could do is you can copy again, paste it in and do this cool effect here with the alteration and it's, uh, it's just pretty cool. So. Kind of this bonus technique included a lot of the things that we learned here and it just shows that the more you know about Procreate and the more time you spend using this app, there's just so many possibilities in it. And that's one of the reasons why I love this. I think it's uh, just so, it's just so cool. There's so much you can do. Whew. Well, thanks for sticking it out. I know that was lengthy, but I hope you learned something. If you did, and if you, or if you enjoyed this content, I don't know if you <laughs> like listening to me talk or something. I don't know, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, stay tuned for more videos because we're just getting started. So thanks for tuning in. Peace out.